Hey everybody, how's it going? Nito17 here, and today we got some pretty fun stuff to talk about. Uh, a big rumor, actually, that has some legitimacy. Now, I say this because the person who, it's, I mean, it's not really a rumor per se, but it, it's based on a discussion that people were having on a forum, and I'll get into all this stuff in a second. But um, yeah, so we're going to be talking about Pokemon Switch today. Uh, this is just a Pokemon Switch news slash discussion video, which is why it's on my uh, Pokemon Switch discussion series. For those of you who may not have noticed, I hold all my Pokemon Switch discussions on one playlist. Um, that way, you know, there's no confusion in terms of what the discussion is, and there's not a bunch of different thumbnails for different videos pertaining to the same thing. To me, that seems redundant, and it can come off as trying to get views and things like that. As you guys already know, I'm not in it to do that, so I try to keep it as simple for you guys as possible. Oh, okay, want to talk about Pokemon Switch? Let's go to the Pokemon Switch discussions playlist. So that's where this will be added to today. And without further ado, let's get into it. So a friend of mine on Twitter, Cyber Knight, who's been, me and him talk almost daily just about video games and different things, Kingdom Hearts 3. And he sent me some pretty interesting things in regards to a thread on Reset Era. Now before I get into that, the thread on Reset Era is actually something that was started based off of a different article. Now US Gamer, for those of you who know what that that news outlet is if you want to really call them that I, I guess they are I mean they, they report on stuff but so they they made an article that said Pokemon switch will not release in 2018 and here's why well they based the entire article off of the premise that the new game coming out for the switch was generation 8 which is fair enough there will not be a generation 8 Pokemon game coming out this year it's too late um, by the time it would be announced it would be June Unless the game was announced for like March 2019, then there could be one. But for a 2018 release and a new generation to come out, be announced at E3 would be pretty late in the game. So um, that's what US Gamer was basing that article off of. However, we started getting into some different things on Reset Era because the original thread on Reset Era was about that article. And then it, it shifted lanes real quick. So for those of you who don't know who Emily Rogers is, Emily Rogers is a gaming journalist. I'm pretty sure she's an administrator on Reset Era and NeoGAF. Now I'm not too familiar with NeoGAF. I'm not sure if it's the exact same thing as Reset Era. I'm pretty sure they're two different outlets, but I'm not too familiar with how it's organized. Nonetheless, Emily Rogers has a pretty good reputation. Um, of course, she hasn't been right on every single thing because information is only as good as your source. However, she is the most credible person. We have heard talk about Pokemon Switch since probably the beginning of the year. You have the Japanese Riddler, the Chinese Riddler, with things, but none of the information they've been able to put out has been confirmed yet, so we don't know if they're right or wrong. They were right about a few things in the past, so they do hold some water as well. However, Emily Rogers has a much more thorough and depth track record. Again, she hasn't been right about everything, but she has been right majority of the time, more often than she is wrong, which is always what you're looking for when you're talking about people like this. So Emily Rogers, I found an article, someone asked who she was, this guy here says she was one of the first ones to leak everything about the Switch. Everyone made fun of her and said how obvious it was she was lying. She then became a meme where everyone had fun acting like how stupid she was and what a liar she was. Jeez, that really says a lot about where we're at on cyberbullying. Anyway, then after the reveal, every single thing she said was 100% absolutely correct. Wahaha. So they probably believe her no matter what to not look like idiot douchebags again? Question mark. The bias is strong here, this guy says, and then... He says not really. He's almost completely correct. Now that's from a different user. Um, so Emily Rogers has I, I did some research and she's she's leaked some some very in incredible things actually. She's not a Nintendo insider. She's a gaming journalist with Nintendo sources is how I understand it. And um, if you guys want to uh, look for some information on things that she has leaked, there's a ton of it out there. I don't have all those links and I couldn't gather a bunch of them to put in this video. I will find some though. And I will put it in the description below so you guys can kind of reference and see what it, you know, in the past she's leaked. But she was right on a lot of things about the NX, if not all of it, from some of the articles I've read and what this guy says. Now let's go to the next tab. So on the next tab here, here's Emily Rogers. Yeah, she's an administrator. And Sarah B was actually communicating as well. This was yesterday. Um, so her comment here was based on the fact that she said her and Joe Merrick were, were talking to other individuals and Emily Rogers said there's no way Pokemon Switch game misses the holidays. Now that conversation was in reference to Generation 8. They were talking about Generation 8. Cerebi said the same thing. Um, 
a Pokemon Switch, there's no way it misses the holidays if it is a Generation 8 type game. Someone, there's a, a bunch of different threads up here. People were saying, you know, um, does this hold water? Is it based on knowledge? Like, like what are you guys getting at? And they start talking about the movie and things like that. Actually, the anime's ratings are solid and higher average than most given it in X and Y. And the end of Best Wishes, it routinely hits the anime top 10 each week. So the show's doing good, but then we get to here. Someone says, is this based off knowledge that Pokemon Switch wouldn't miss a holiday? I look forward to the great and approved sequel to No Way Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 coming out this year. She says it's based on knowledge. There's a new Pokemon game coming to Switch this year, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a Generation 8 game. Now, I'm going to go further on uh, down in the thread. Joe Merrick actually says the same thing. He says that a Switch game this year does not mean it has to be Generation 8. And I've been saying this since February, and it's actually based off two people. My theory has in February has been based off two people that I've been in contact with indirectly and have to just pay really close attention. So when we get in here, here's something I mentioned in another thread. Emily said, maybe the Pokemon games releasing on Switch in 2018 aren't the only Pokemon games Switch in development? Question mark. Just some food for thought. That is freaking, that, that's pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. Now, we, we, we've kind of had a feeling, some of us have had a feeling, that Creatures Inc. is working on a game as well. Mystery Dungeon, Pokemon Rumble, um, you know, whatever it is, that, that there's been another Pokemon game in the works. Now, it's very possible that they start a presentation at E3 or via Direct. Here's a new Switch game, but dot, 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 Pokemon Switch, boom. It would make sense for, for a side game to be announced as well this year, but... I, I, the internet would explode if a Pokemon Switch side game came out before the main series game. People, I don't even like. I can't even put in words how much the internet would blow up. That uh, Chibi Emojo emoji that Nintendo posted on fire has nothing on on what that would do. This guy says you're getting the hype again. The odds of Pokemon Switch missing the holidays are slim to none. That's what I was referring to before. So let's go to page nine here, because um, there's some more things. Based on Emily's post, we're in for a glorious repeat of No Way Xenoblade Crow. Okay. Da, da, da. Whatever the Pokemon game is, it's got to be something substantial. And let's see. I believe she actually posted something else. Let me see here. God, if I, if I see Pokemon Stars one more time, it's crazy. See, here's where Joe Merrick said. People are basing this on the notion that the first game would be Generation 8. It is too soon for Generation 8. This is Cerebi. So he is under the full scope of the fact that if there is a new game, more than likely it will not be Generation 8. Now, I don't see how it can be. If there is a game this year, I don't see how it can be Generation 8. Now, you can make the argument that whatever the Switch game is, is automatically Generation 8 because of the fact that it's on a new console. Fair enough, because of the gameplay and everything's new and it's a new concept. You could technically consider that Generation 8. But one of the theories I have that I've kind of based on some things too. So we had, um, let's see, we had Pokemon Black and White come out in 2010. Then in 2011 we had a break. Then we had Pokemon Black and White 2 in 2012, X and Y in 13, Orbass in 2014. So when you look at those types of games in 2012, was Black and White 2, the equivalent to Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. New generation game, Pokemon Sun. Then we had, um, or excuse me, Pokemon X and Y. And then we had a remake type game, which was Oras. So you could make the argument that Pokemon Sun and Moon were 2016. We got Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, a enhanced type version similar to Black 2 and White 2, because that Black 2 and White 2 came after Black and White. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon came after Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And then, um, excuse me, Pokemon Ultra Sun Ultra Moon came after Pokemon Sun and Moon. And now we're missing that remake type game. We're missing the Oras, right, of the, of the three of the series. So this very well could be a Kanto reimagining of, of some sort. That very well could be what it is. And, you know, we'll just have to see. But Emily Rogers is in full mode saying that we're not just going to get one game in 2018. We're going to get two games, possibly, in 2018. And she says it is based off the information that she has. So, 
what do you guys think? I mean, do you think Emily Rogers holds some water here? I certainly do. I think that she is going to hit the nail right on the head. And again, this is so much more interesting to talk about because she's someone with credibility. This puke thing, the freaking game FAQ rumors, the 4chan rumors, none of those people have any type of credibility whatsoever. None. And she does. And no one is talking about this. And it, it kind of surprises me. It actually really surprises me because this is something. You know, 4chan and all that shit was based off nothing. You know, so I think this holds a lot of water. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below if Emily Rogers is, is, is kind of onto something. Now, this was cool. Uh, Sarah B posted a uh, generation list of games that have released during certain time frames. So he said, no way in hell are they missing the holiday period. No generation has started outside of that three month window. Daisy, be quiet. Lay down. And so we're getting over here. November, November, September, September, October, November. So yeah, they're very holiday based now, especially because everything's a worldwide release. They want to do everything at the same time. And then we got the odds of Pokemon Switch missing. The so that was the original statement there. What's the evidence for this? So far, the only direction we have is that the game is listed 2018 or later. And then, like I said, we got... Someone said, tell me more. A major Pokemon game wouldn't miss the holiday period as evidenced above with the listing I gave. This All this conversations, guys, was yesterday. Very early in the morning here in America. But it was just yesterday that Joe Merrick and Emily had this conversation. The odds of Pokemon Switch missing the holidays are just in the none. And then we go down here. Whoop! Did I miss her? And as you as you can tell, people are not combative toward Emily at all because she's pretty well known, and she's more well known than that Eurogamer guy too, Tom Phillips, I believe, who said Pokemon Stars was a thing and it never was. So I don't know how this isn't getting attention. I guess because it's not popular, and you know all the PokeTubers and stuff just refuse to talk about it. But to me, this is actual information. So let me know what you guys think. Is it based on knowledge? It's based on knowledge. There's a new Pokemon game coming to Switch this year, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's Generation 8. Hype as fuck, guys. I'm hype. This kind of makes me feel a tiny bit better because I just think a game is coming this year, and I feel like this game has been in development for quite a while, regardless of whatever that game is. I feel like it's been in development since earliest. 2015 mid 2015 so anyways let me know what you guys think about emily's comments let me know what you guys think about what she has to say next we're going to hop on to a gamestop listing now the thing with the gamestop listing is so if you guys don't know there was a rumor going around that um well what the freaking hell is going on oh shit am i being am i being hacked uh oh man i was just i was just on this website what in the hell ah uh. Okay, well anyways, GameStop posted a thread um, of game releases coming out for 2018. Now they all have December 31st placeholders. So 15 to 16 new SKUs of games. And I just learned that on those on that list, Pokemon, or excuse me, Super Smash Brothers is not one of the SKUs that are hidden. Super Smash Brothers is actually listed. Okay, Super Smash Brothers is not one of the SKUs. It's right here. Excuse me. Super Smash Brothers, right here. Here's all the available SKUs. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16 new SKUs. Price $60. Guys, those are some heavy hitters. Now, they're placeholder dates for 2018, so they can still, they can be 2019 titles that's happened before. Um,. But holy shit, guys, if this is an indication of things to come from Nintendo's Direct at E3, then we are in for some we are in some for some pretty damn big news. You can assume Fire Emblem Yoshi are, are them. But that's the thing, is no, Yoshi's listed here too. Holy shit. Valkyrie Chronicles. So they're not Yoshi's li not even listed. Is Fire Emblem listed here? It's not. So Fire Emblem is probably one of these SKUs. But go ahead and crack it, guys. I want you guys to let me know what you think these SKUs are. Tell me what you think these SKUs are. 
just go ahead and plug them in in a list down in the comment section. I really want to know you guys' thoughts. I thought I would throw this in the video just because it was really, really interesting, and I got pretty fucking hyped because that's a shit ton of games. And if they're third-party games mixed with first-party games, we are in for a hell of a ride. So buckle your seatbelts, guys. The next few weeks are going to be interesting, and we have exactly, exactly one month until Nintendo's E3 presentation. We're already in the middle of May, guys. Boom. So let's get hype. Let's keep talking the conversation. Let's keep it going. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, share, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you guys think. I look forward to discussing with you guys. Follow me on Twitter, KingNito17, Nito17. And I'll catch you guys later. Have a good weekend. Peace.